In process systems, physical conditions such as pressure, temperature, level, and flow are subject to change. These changeable conditions are called process variables. To help maintain the efficiency of a process, the values of these variables are often controlled by automatic process control systems. Part of an operator's responsibility is to use these control systems and understand how they work. Many plant processes are monitored and regulated by some type of process control system. A process control system monitors the value of a process variable and provides actions that control the value of the variable. Two basic types of process control are manual control and automatic control. With manual control, an operator monitors the value of a process variable and then manually makes whatever adjustments are necessary to control the process. Automatic control is basically a form of control that's performed with little or no human intervention. To get a better understanding of how an automatic control system works, we'll use this simplified illustration of a system that's used to control the level of water in a tank. Since the level of the water is what's maintained at a desired value, it can be thought of as the controlled variable in the system. It can also be thought of as the measured variable because the control system uses it as a basis for making operating changes. The level of the water will remain constant as long as the flow of water into the tank equals the flow of water out of the tank. In this system, the water level is controlled by regulating the flow of water into the tank. For that reason, the flow of water into the tank is called the manipulated variable. As with all automatic control systems, this system has four basic parts or elements. One element, the primary element, is a sensing device that's located where the process variable is monitored. In this system, the primary element is a float that senses the level of water in the tank. The float is connected through a mechanical linkage to the second element in the system, a measuring element. In this system, the measuring element is a transmitter. The transmitter detects the position of the float and transmits a signal representing the level in the tank to the third element in the system, a controlling element. The controlling element, or controller, measures the signal from the transmitter, compares the signal to the desired level setting, computes any difference between the two values, and if necessary, produces a corrective signal. The controller sends the corrective signal to the final control element, which in this case is a control valve. The control valve adjusts the flow of water to the tank as needed to keep the level at the desired setting. When a process is operating normally, the variables for that process will be at or near their desired values. The desired value of a process variable is known as the set point. For example, the set point for the water level in this system is 3 feet. When the values of the process variables in a system remain relatively constant over a period of time, the system is said to be operating under steady state conditions. Most control systems will allow slight variations in the values of process variables. But if the value of a variable changes significantly from its set point, corrective action may be needed to return the process to its original operating conditions. To see how a process disturbance can affect a control system, let's look at the automatic level control system that we saw earlier. In this example, a process disturbance causes a decrease in the demand for water from the tank. The decrease in demand causes the level of water and the float to rise. In this case, the water level rises to four feet. The movement of the float is transferred through the mechanical linkage to the transmitter. The transmitter then sends a signal that's proportional to the increased water level to the controller. When the controller receives the signal, it measures the signal, compares the measured value to set point, and computes the difference between the two values. The controller then sends a corrective signal to the control valve. The control valve responds to the signal from the controller by closing to reduce the flow of water to the tank.
This compensates for the decrease in demand that caused the water level to rise. As a result, the level returns to its original set point value of three feet. The transmitter is the measuring element in this system. It detects the position of the float and transmits a signal representing the level to the controlling element. One of the basic methods of control used by automatic process control systems is feedback control. In a feedback control system, a control action is initiated after the controlled variable has deviated from set point. To see how an automatic feedback control system works, we'll use this illustration of a heat exchange process. In this system, steam is used to heat water. The steam enters the system through a valve, then flows through tubes inside the heater, and exits the heater through a pipe on the other side. The steam transfers heat to the water, which enters the heater at the top, flows around the tubes, and exits the heater at the bottom. The temperature of the water at the outlet of the heater is the controlled variable for the system. It's also the measured variable, because the control system uses it as a basis for making operating changes. The manipulated variable in this system is the inlet steam flow. That is, the steam flow to the heater. It's adjusted to keep the outlet water temperature at set point. The primary element in this feedback control system is a temperature sensing device in the outlet water line. More specifically, the device is a temperature sensing bulb, which contains a gas. If the temperature of the water leaving the heater increases, the gas in the bulb expands. This causes a pressure increase that's carried along the tubing connecting the bulb to a temperature transmitter. The transmitter sends a pneumatic signal that's proportional to the water temperature to a controller. The controller measures the signal and compares it to set point. This is how the controller detects that the temperature of the water has increased. The controller then computes the difference between the temperature of the water and set point and sends a corrective signal to the final control element in the system, which is the control valve. The control valve responds to the signal from the controller by closing to reduce the amount of steam flow to the heater. As a result, less heat transfer takes place in the heater, and the outlet water temperature returns to set point. A feed-forward control system attempts to correct for a process disturbance before the controlled variable in the process deviates from set point. To get a better understanding of how a feed-forward control system works, let's look at an illustration of a heat exchange process that's controlled by a feed-forward system. In this system, steam flows through tubes inside a heater and heats water that flows around the tubes. The controlled variable in the system is the water temperature at the outlet of the